would say good morning, but it's not. I slept like a dead person until four, and Ricky said, do you want the good news first or the bad news? And of course I wanted the bad news, because I already knew. We lost one, and I'm pretty upset about it. Um, Ricky, thankfully he works nights, he came out and checked on them at 11, and until 11.30 he was figuring out something else. The only thing I can figure is that uh, some kind of predator or something was snooping around the outside of the coop and scaring the chicks because he came out to check them and they all had gotten themselves completely soaking wet in their water dishes and apparently had ended up trampling one in his water dish and so he was very dead in their water dish. So we're down to 161. Shouldn't matter, right? I already knew that I was gonna lose some, or I should have known. But it's still, it's, I'm having a pretty emotional response. I haven't even known them for 24 hours yet, but they're my babies. He hung another lamp in the middle of the night, took away their water dishes. See, we failed to get enough uh, waterers, so then ordered some, but they aren't going to arrive until today. They were same day shipping, they didn't get here same day. So one of these little blonde guys is no more, but we still have more than we bought. But it's not that, you know, I want, I want everybody safe and happy. And, uh, they're not. But the rest are doing fine. I've been trying not to cry all morning. <laughs> I don't know what the temperature is. Just under 80. So, hopefully that heat lamp is keeping them warm. These guys, plus one other that I've already taken care of, have crusty butt. All the others have poofy little butts, and these three have little crusty butts. So we've got to rinse them with warm water. That can clog up their little butthole and kill them. Well, they're not happy about their little butt rub. They were screaming bloody murder a second ago. But I just rinsed their butt with warm water until it broke up. Now I'm going to put them back in with the others. <laughs> they don't like sounds. Yesterday they weren't so skittish. When I opened my camera, it made a musical sound and they all <laughs> ran to the other side of the cage and then that caused me to laugh, which <laughs> scared them all over again. Oh goodness, I've got to check both of these cages for Krusty Bat now. It's really been quite a nice day. Um, it stayed fairly cloudy, speckled clouds that cover the sun enough to keep it pretty cool today. Um, it took till afternoon to finally get uh, this thermometer in here to say 100. Um, but everything's going off without a hitch. Once I got it to 100, I uh, turned off the lamps um, because it'll maintain temperature pretty well in here. And anyway, everybody's doing fine besides being little scaredy cats today hiding over there away from me. This silly girl has taken all her straw out of the box and threw it down here for her. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out a situation like I bought some lumber to segment this into four segments. I only wanted two rabbits but in our area these four were all we could find for a decent price. Was not anticipating that. But that's what we're going to work with. So I'm going to separate that into four segments. They're still about the same size as the cages that they're in, if I do that. But it's a lot easier for me, because I can reach in and grab them. Whereas in these cages, I have this tiny little opening. And it's really hard if they want to run from me back to the back corners, which they always do. I'm all having to like get on my hands and knees and reach up in there. It's, it's just very inconvenient. So I like my style a lot better, but I, it's going to take a while to get everything where I want it. And part of the problem is, you have these plans, and it's like nothing ever works out the way you plan it. <laughs> we had planned on 154 babies. We had got 162. 
I had planned on zero dying, and we have a death toll that's now at two. We had planned on having two rabbit or two rabbits, and we ended up with four very mean rabbits. I had planned on having a happy, healthy orchard, and instead it was invaded by Japanese beetles. <laughs> just so many plans. You just gotta go with it. Go with the flow. Just wanted to come and check on my garden since I used that rabbit tea. Oh my, my onions. Um, next to that big weed, there's these little strings sticking straight up. That's a weed, and those are the onions. Yesterday, they were about half that height before the rabbit tea. So these are some peas that we planted kind of late. Ricky put them in a plastic sack to see if they did okay. And yesterday they were about this size and I watered these with, when I was rinsing out my experiment blender, I just poured it in here and now, just in one day, I mean they've been staying the same size. Give them a little food and they take off. Looks like the blooms are falling off of that already after the first day. And there's a little squash for me. Awesome. I may have food yet. So Russell showed you those radishes that he said were growing good. I told them they were ready to be picked and they're huge. So I was pulling them and it was insanely easy. Like, I mean, just two fingers and they just come right out. They just pop right out. Oh, that one's split. But I've never had anything so easy to harvest. And I just wanted to show you guys because if you want to do this method just for the harvesting, I mean, they just fall out of the dirt. Well, there's the radishes that we harvested. Quite a lot. Um, and all those greens can be fed to your rabbits, so I'm going to have to put some in the refrigerator. But I still have this many radishes that aren't ready yet. But that was quick. I've only been here for three weeks and I'm already pulling radishes. Some of them I got a little too late, and this happened. But that's still edible. No need in wasting food. But this is my first time to grow radishes. So I didn't know when you were supposed to harvest them. There's another split one. Well, there's how many I got off the harvest of the first radishes. Some of them were really, really woody and hard. I sharpened my knife right before I did it, and it wouldn't even go through there. So those got set aside, and that's what that bundle is. All the roots and the woody bits. That's our compost pile. And we've got a huge bag of the greens to go to the rabbits, and we're going to find out if we humans can eat them. I don't know how to cook greens, but I'll learn. Well, I had these solar attic fans. Um, there was another on the top there. I've put it inside, but I can't get this one to work. Um, they, I used them to help ventilate my greenhouse business in Oklahoma, uh, but I got one to work, so I put the solar panel on top of the barn. It's not much, but it's stirring up the air in here. I just hung it from the rafters, so that'll give some air circulation for my bunnies. Because yesterday was so hot and none of us ate, I've decided to bring all the bunnies under this tree. And it's funny because the clouds are preventing it from being very hot out here at all. I have so much to do. I just don't want to do it today. I've just been checking on everybody about every 45 minutes. <laughs> I've upgraded the ducks to a bigger area. I think they like it. Hey guys! Hey guys! Well, look who's in the barn. I think there's a patrolman, one of those guys, outside the barn, and he's checking me out, making sure I don't do anything, but there's still such a mess in there, but I think they're going to make a home in here. I noticed those from previous years, but... There's Russell with his rabbit transporter, taking them back to the barn for the night. Yep, there he goes. Snow's going to go help.
got to put his lawnmower up. Those are the pea plants from Africa that some lady at Russell's Old Work gave him that I sprouted in the window on moist paper towels. They're doing pretty good. He probably watered them with his rabbit poop tea water. Okay guys, my camera, it is so dark my camera thinks that the lens cover is closed. But this is a unique opportunity to see what my chicken coops look like at night. You see the shining red light? That's the window that I made into the ugly coop. And it's really convenient for checking on the chicks without opening their little door. I can just peek in here and with my camera, I can even zoom for me and for you There's to see how everybody's doing. Unfortunately, zoom out with this coop. The same cannot be said. Everybody is much less energetic than they are during the day. They are ready for bed. Earlier, before I went and got my camera, there were a lot more napping. There's a whole pile of nappers. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. <laughs> 